Hey calculus class, today is topic two, determining limits by graphs and tables. So from yesterday, we did simple functions such as x cubed. How would you find the limit as x approaches three of f of x given from what you know from yesterday? Go ahead and pause the video and jot down what you're thinking. Okay. So you should have said something like, as we approach x equals three from the left and the right, you should notice from the graph that the function is approaching the same y values. And you should have noticed that if you were to sketch the graph of x cubed, the function is approaching 27. Now with today's lesson, what about a more complicated function such as the following? How would we calculate this limit. So I want you to pause the video and explain how you would calculate this limit with the current knowledge you have about limits. Okay, so think about a graph. Could you, if you were to graph this function, determine the limit? Why or why not? And if you need to sketch a graph, you can. So go ahead and pause the video and see if you can figure it out from the graph. Now by graphing this function, your graph should look something similar to this. And as you can see, as we approach x equals one, at x equals one, it does not exist. However, from the left and the right, it appears that it is approaching the exact same value. However, this value is not very easy to identify exactly from the graph. So what is another representation that you can use to observe a function? I hope you said a table because it's a table. So if we were to create a table of values for this function and look at x values that are really, really close to one from the left and from the right, we can see that the y values are approaching the same value. And according to this table, we would say that they're approaching roughly 0 0.5. So we would say that the limit of this function is one half. All right, now I want you to use your graphing calculator to create the table. So go ahead and try these two on your own with your calculator. If you have a TI Inspire, I did post a video on how to create a table with the TI Inspires. Those of you who have 84s, I'm assuming that you have done the tables in your previous math classes. If not, um, you can always come and ask me or email me. So go ahead, pause the video and calculate both of these limits using a table of values. Welcome back. I hope that it went well. So if the first one, if you did it correctly, you should have gotten 0 0.25. And the second one, you should have gotten 0 0.6. Now remember, if you have any questions, go to Edmodo and post your questions. Hopefully other students or myself can answer your questions. All right, now we're going into how to calculate infinite limits. So in order to calculate an infinite limit, you want to find both the left and right hand limits to determine whether the limit is infinitely positive or infinitely negative. When finding a one-sided infinite limit, only find that side. All right, so we're going to go through an example. All right, so we are going to calculate this limit as x approaches zero of this fu function. Now I have already given you the graph and the table to help us determine that limit. So you need to do both the left hand and the right hand. So if we were to look at the graph for the left-handed, as we're approaching x equals zero from the left, you should see that the function is getting increasingly, increasingly larger towards the negatives. And from the right-hand side, as we're approaching zero, you should see that the graph is getting also increasingly large in the negative side. So yes, if you said that the limits on the left and the limit on the right were both negative infinity, you would be correct. 
Now by looking at the graph or the table, you'll see that as we're getting closer and closer to zero on the left hand side, we have a very, very large negative number. And the same thing on the right, another very large negative number. So by observing the table, we can also say that the left and the right handed limits are negative infinity. Well, since both the left and the right are the same, we can say that the limit as x approaches zero is also negative infinity. All right, now on your own using a graph or a table, I want you to go ahead and calculate the following limits on your own. Go ahead and pause and I will return later. Welcome back. Hopefully this went well. All right, so with the first one, hopefully from the graph or the table, you should have gotten negative infinity as x approaches five from the left. Notice that it's only the left-hand side, so you don't have to worry about the right. Now we're doing secant as x approaches pi over two from the right-hand side. You should have also gotten negative infinity. Now that's just a fluke that these both examples were negative infinity. So <laughs> sometimes they will be positive infinity. All right, now the big question is the secant from x approaches pi over two. So that means you have to do both the right and the left. Well, if you look at the table of secant as x is approaching pi over two, we know that secant is undefined at pi over two. So that means if we were to look from the left, you should see that from the left, the function's getting infinitely bigger on the positive side. However, on the right, it's getting infinitely bigger on the negative side. So is it gonna be positive infinity or negative infinity? This is what we call a little gray area. Since the, it's going approaching two different sides, of the vertical asymptote, we're just gonna say that this limit does not exist. Now, we've been using the graphing calculator this whole time to get the table and the graph. Now, if you don't have a graphing calculator, that's okay, you can do it without one. So, here is the first thing you do. You're going to choose a number really close to the A value, so whatever value you're approaching, and in the direction that the limit is going. If it does not tell you specifically the left and the right, that means you have to go from both sides. You're then gonna take the number that you chose and plug that number into the function and determine what value the function is approaching. All right, so let's go ahead and do this example, the one from the previous slide that you got from your graphing calculator as negative infinity. So in order to do this, I'm going from the left, so I only have to pick a number that is really close to five on the left-hand side. Can you think of one? How about four? Is that close enough? I hope not. Yeah, I think we can get closer than four. Yes, you will have to use decimals. So I would probably choose 4.99. So I'm gonna take that 4.99 and I'm going to plug it into the function where x is, do some lovely little simplification uh, to get negative 600. Now, some people are satisfied, yes, that's big enough for me to say that the limit is approaching negative infinity. However, some people are not always convinced so if you're not convinced, then you can pick a number even closer to five than 4.99. How about 4.999? You plug that in, simplify, and you notice that you get an even bigger not negative number. So this just justifies the fact that yes, this limit as x approaches five from the left is negative infinity. Okay, so this is calculating it by plugging in numbers. Now this example, we're going to calculate it with a table, how to create a table by hand. So 
I want you to go ahead and create a table choosing a couple of values on either side of negative three. So since this is a limit as x approaches negative three, and it doesn't tell us specifically what side, we have to go from both. So go ahead, take a couple of minutes, press pause, and create a table of values. This is the table that I chose. Notice I have negative three in the middle and I have values from the right and from the left. And yes, I realize that the values are backwards and I'm sorry about that. Notice how it's getting closer to negative three on both sides. Don't choose whole numbers. Now you're gonna take each one of these X values and you're going to plug each of them in to this function to see what numbers you get. Hopefully, the y values from the right and the left are approaching the same value. So go ahead, press pause, take a couple of minutes, and complete the table. All right, I am not going to give you the answer quite yet. Uh, we will go ahead and check your answers in class tomorrow. I hope you enjoyed today and I will see you guys tomorrow.